thank you for joining us for the NASA CO2 Conversion Challenge Phase 2 webinar. Um, I am Jenny Adams, and I work at Common Pool, the agency that is helping manage the competition. I have my colleagues Ethan Matthews and Amy Klein on the phone as well as the NASA team. Uh, we ask that you please stay muted during the call, um, and if you have any questions, you can go ahead and enter them in the chat box, and we'll read them out a little bit later and answer them for you. Our call agenda for today will include introduction from the NASA team, followed by a walkthrough of the registration requirements listed on the website. Uh, please do note that the registration process for phase two is a little different than for phase one. Um, phase two registration is being conducted via email. All registration requirements that we'll walk through and that are listed on the website must be, sub must be submitted via email to solutions at co2conversionchallenge.org by next Saturday, November 30th at 5 o'clock p.m. Central. After we discuss the requirements for registration, we will go ahead and open it up for Q&A. Again, please remain muted and use the chat box to answer any or to ask any questions, um, and we will read them aloud a little bit later. So we've concluded that concept phase and on, and then opened up uh, the registration again to um, individuals and teams to come and bring um, more of a hardware solution and demonstration. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to John to talk about kind of the, the technical details of phase two. So John, over to you. Thank you, Angela. Um, yes, I'm John Hogan. I'm from NASA Ames Research Center. I am a researcher there who's looking at um, life support and biotechnology for um, future missions. And we um, established this uh, challenge to address a very specific problem that we're having, although it has much larger implications. Um, that we are looking um, specifically to be able to create higher order molecules from carbon dioxide and hydrogen um, using only abiotic, as non-biological methodology, um, for the purpose, in our particular purpose, to be able to feed um, microbes in biomanufacturing systems. Um, we are currently using um, organics that are that you know, we we can do this from carbon dioxide. Um, we're making um, molecules such as methane, um, ethanol. Uh, methanol is also made acetate. Um, there are C1 and C2 compounds. Um, we and they have a certain amount of um, availability to microbes, uh, but they typically limit the microbes we can use and the amount of energy that they can impart, um, and they have their own limitation. And so we are very interested in being able to create, um, using non-biological systems, um, sugars that would be able to feed our, our microbes. Um, and this will also, at the same time, start to push the boundaries of CO2 conversion to much larger uh, and more, more functional um, feedstock chemicals both for biological but also uh, not biological chemical synthesis of many different products. So um, as Angela mentioned, our phase one was um, getting people's concepts of how they would do it. Um, phase two is actually building these systems um, to be able to show that you were able to do that. Um, and if you can, um, if you've read the um, uh, essentially the, the call for this, the, the challenge that's posted on the website, you'll see that we have a number of different compounds that we are, will accept as um, target compounds that we're looking for. Um, and these are in actually in broad categories. So there, there's uh, glycerol and uh, three, four, five, and six carbon sugars. Um, we are interested in anywhere in that space, we understand that uh, making glucose, and in particular, um, D-glucose, um, is what we're actually after because um, the enantiomer, the L enantiomer of glucose is not used biologically. Um, so we are um, mostly only interested in biologically available forms of these sugars, and we will um, be able to um, essentially judge the um, contestants abilities based on um, the level of uh, carbons in those sugars. So um, glucose gets the most points and you start getting less points, um, as you can see in that, uh, that matrix, as the number of 
uh, carbons in your sugar goes down. Um, and L forms um, will will not count uh, towards that. So um, that is something to remember in this in this format. Um, we are um, going to be doing a, a judging of this um, by uh, uh, actually asking people to make this. Um, if you look at the rules, you'll see that we're, we're asking people at your at your home base. We we're not asking you to travel to for judging. We will come to your site for judging, but there is a um, essentially a submission for judging that you will um, indicate to us. Um, and through there's a, a number of different aspects and it's it's in the document so I'm not going to go over each one but to be able to show that you are able to do this and what level and what compounds um, you've analyzed that you think you're making um, and provide us this evidence and then we'll review that and if we are um, satisfied that you are actually meeting the criteria for uh, for judging then we will uh, dispatch uh, judges to your site location um, to do a, a judging and that judging will be a one-day judging um, it will happen within the course of approximately eight hours um, we ask that um, your team be able to produce this your your intended compounds within a seven hour period and that's a continuous seven hour period meaning that um, we start the clock at a particular time, and seven hours later, um, we will say that's that's the end of our of your ability to make um, compounds, and we will um, take that sample um, and we will analyze that to confirm um, what you have thought that you're making in it, so that we can understand that better. Um, and we will do this for each team that gets judged, and um, and then um, rank them accordingly based on the different criteria that that we have listed in there. Um, so in, in general, that's, um, that's the top level. Um, I I'm, don't have anything else to add. I don't know if, if we go to questions now or. Yeah, thank you, thank you, John. Thank you, Angela. Um, that was super helpful context. Um, I think what we'd like to do now is um, navigate over to the registration page um, because, of course, before anyone um, can participate and do all the things that John just described, um, we do need to get a, a registration from um, you first. So here on the website, uh, we list out all the registration requirements. And Angela, I don't know if, if you're um, the person to do it, but if we could just kind of briefly speak to each of these requirements um, and make sure everyone's clear on what is needed, um, what they need to submit by next Saturday, I think that would be very helpful. Uh, sure. So the, I mean, the biggest source of information and to make sure that you're really thorough in what you need as far as um, registration is concerned um, is going to be contained on the website. So please make sure that you visit um, the registration page on the website so that it serves kind of like a checklist so you can see, um, you know, what's, what's required of you. Um, so you can see that on the screen right now. Um, but also make sure you go through the rules and understand um, what is required of you uh, to participate as well. So if you could just go up just a smidge on the screen, please. Oh, to the first section. Yeah. So of course, you know, when you submit to your when you submit your registrations, we need to know who you are. So please submit a team name or an organization name. Um, every team is required to have a team leader, uh, and that team leader will be the sole uh, source of of communication between um, Common Pool and the competing team. Um, so we need to have that team leader named, uh, as well as complete contact information, as shown here. Um, in order to be eligible for a prize, the team leader does have to be a U.S. citizen uh, or permanent resident, so you do need to provide that information as well. And again, there's details, there's more details about that on the registration page. Um, please make sure that you indicate who uh, is on your team, if you have support members of your team, and um, whether each of them is a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. There is a requirement that participants are over the age of 18. Um, so please provide that information as well. And then if you are participating um, as an organization or on behalf of a business, we do need to understand um, the primary place of business uh, as well. Um, there is a requirement that uh, teams are have uh, insurance. 
So they need to have a show proof of insurance that they have valid insurance for $250,000 um, with NASA named as an additional insured uh, party on that policy. And again, I know there's, there's probably going to be questions about that, but there's a lot of really great information that unfortunately we can't cover in deep detail today, um, but there's a lot of very good information and helpful tools on the, on the website. Um, so you can go through uh, the rest of this page specifically, and uh, it will walk you through what, uh, what proof of citizenship would be accepted, um, other information that we need from you, kind of what those, what those look like and what we're asking you to submit. And again, as Jenny said, the, uh, all of this information will come through uh, as an email address. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to um, email that same address, correct, Jenny, the solutions? Yes, yes. So if you have any questions um, about any specific requirement or if you have any questions or concerns about submitting your registration, you know, please reach out and ask those questions um, through that solution at co2conversionchallenge.org uh, and someone will get back to you quickly uh, to help walk you through that process. Uh, and then if you are ready to submit, you can submit everything to that email address as well. Thank you, Angela. And just yeah, one note on the documentation. Um, please do make sure that you are including the actual documents, the actual insurance policies, the actual um, you know verification and proof um, instead of you know kind of like we need we need the actual documents. Um, so we do appreciate that. And um, yeah, as Angela said, any questions regarding any of these requirements, um, you can email solutions at co2conversionchallenge.org, and we'll respond as quickly as possible. Um, I think there are anything, any other helpful tips on here. Um, I do know the insurance um, component tends to um, bring up more questions. And um, yeah, we're happy to answer any specific questions you have about that. Um, anything else, Angela, you want to call out? I'm trying to think what else people have asked about already that we could go over. But yeah, I think it's just you know gathering materials, making sure you're eligible and have everything you need, and submitting them by November 30th at 5 o'clock p.m. Central. Great. Um, I don't think I've seen any questions come in through the chat box yet, but if anyone, any participants um, on the line have any questions, you can go ahead and um, type them in the chat box. We'll read them aloud. Um, anything about registration or um, you know, competition as a whole, based on the information that was discussed a little earlier, uh, we're happy to, to answer at this time. What we could do too is um, quickly go over the timeline. Um, Ethan, if you don't mind just pulling up the timeline, uh, we can kind of walk through what um, the next steps are after registration to give you an idea of what's coming up. Um, so yes, yeah, so November 30th is the registration deadline as we've <laughs> said no, several times already. Um, please do submit by November 30th. And then after that, um, we'll just do an eligibility verification, making sure um, that all the documentation submitted um, complies with the eligibility rules. And then after that, um, we have quite a bit of time where you'll be working through your prototypes um, and projects. Um, we will have a midpoint progress update in March, um, and we'll definitely provide more information as we get closer to that, but it's a good um, time frame and date to keep on your radar. And then that application deadline will be at the beginning of June. So um, as you're planning through, um, always good to know when those dates are. Um, but of course, the, the first date and most important one right now is that November 30th registration deadline. Great, we have a question um, just came through. Um, is there a physical size requirement for the design? All right, yeah, this is John. Um, there's uh, not a requirement, but there it is part of the scoring. Um, if you look at the, the scoring um, that is on the website, um, one of the areas there is um, system scalability, and that's worth uh, 30 points. And there are four components, and one is volume, the other is mass, power, and then the consumable usage. So those are four factors. Um, Volume is 10 points, mass 10 points, power five, and consumable usage is five points. So those help us understand the, how big it is, how heavy it's going to be, 
um, the power and the consumable usage, which are all absolutely major um, factors when we're trying to employ this in space. We, of course, realize that these units are not optimized for space utilization. In fact, they might just be rather large lab scale um, facilities. Um, however, we are still going to look at that as one of the factors. Great, thank you, John. If anyone has any other questions, you can go ahead and enter them in the chat box now. And we do encourage everyone to go through the website. Um, of course, there's a lot of information on application requirements and technical requirements um, throughout the, this website. So please do check it out and go through all the menu items um, as you have a chance. Here we can go ahead and wait a few more minutes. Um, Angela or John, anything else that you can think of we'd want to cover? Uh, John, did you want to uh, talk any more about the midpoint progress update? Just give a little context around that and what that'll help us do. Um, yeah, so that basically we're we're asking for a, a midpoint uh, progress update um, so that we understand um, uh, number one how well you're doing, and it also gives us a, an idea of of who's participating, and um, it will also help us understand um, the, the requirements for judging when when the time comes. Um, so that is that is something that we um, definitely would like um, people to participate in. Great, and then of course we will provide more information um, as we get closer to that as well. Okay, well, I think if there aren't any other questions, um, you can go ahead and wrap up. Um, and again, this uh, session will be uh, shared so others um, have the opportunity to receive the information as well. And um, yeah, we thank you for your interest in the NASA CO2 Conversion Challenge Phase 2. Um, any additional questions can be submitted to solutions at co2conversionchallenge.org and we will respond to you as quickly as possible. Uh, please submit all of your registration requirements no later than next Saturday, November 30th, 2019 at 5 o'clock p.m. Central. And we look forward to receiving your materials and for your participation. Thank you, everyone.